What's up guys, and welcome to Console Empires. Today, we're gonna learn how to play Monks on an Xbox controller. Whoa, let's go. First off, let's break down how Monks actually work. Then we'll take a look at Monk upgrades, controller-specific Monk techniques, and finally, how to defend against Monks. Monks don't behave like other military units, so we'll start our pilgrimage to Monka with understanding what happens when you try to convert an enemy unit. When most units fight, the game takes the attacker's base damage, modifies it by any upgrades, resistances, or bonuses, and then subtracts that amount from the target's HP. Pretty straightforward. When a monk fights, however, something different happens. The defender doesn't have an analogous pool of faith points that gradually deplete like HP. Each attack is an all-or-nothing attempt, and the monk's attack rate is based on a special increment called a monk second, which is a little bit longer than an in-game second, but that's still quicker than an actual second. So either the conversion succeeds or it does nothing. If the targeted unit fails to convert, it suffers no damage and the attempt has no effect on future conversions. If a monk converts for several seconds and dies without success, the target unit isn't then weakened as a unit damaged by other attacks would be. The next monk will have the same chance to convert as his fellow disciple, attacking once for each monk second, regardless of how many monk seconds may have been spent by prior men of the cloth. To make this more confusing, not all monk seconds are equal. The first few seconds cannot succeed. But after 10, almost any unit will immediately convert. A Teuton Scout with Faith being the exception. Even after 10 monk seconds, the conversion still has a chance to fail. Buildings also resist conversion. So while a typical unit will resist for a minimum of 4 monk seconds, a Scout will resist for 8 and a building for 15. Okay, so why does any of that matter? Well, the monk second timer only resets when the monk stops converting. So for example, if the conversion succeeds, the monk is killed, or you order him to walk somewhere else. If you change targets, or the monk walks off on his own to chase a target, the conversion attempt will continue from where it left off. That means you can wallow a resistant unit like an eagle or a building to charge a conversion before switching to say an elephant, which would then instantly convert. Switching targets can also help to keep your monks alive, as you can prioritize the enemy units damaging you without resetting the conversion timer. And if they try to run away, you can similarly switch to closer enemy units at any time while your monk is still chasing, and the conversion progress will transfer to the new target. When a group of monks are converting the same unit, you get multiple chances to convert for each monk second, or possibly overlapping monk seconds depending on how you commanded the units, but either way you're getting more chances to convert. In Castle Age, this has the significant downside of burning multiple monks' faith when the conversion comes in. Conversion attempts always respect the minimum and maximum intervals, even when using multiple monks. So the conversion chance is roughly 25% each time. But that doesn't mean you can just take 4 monks and have a guaranteed conversion, because math is weird. Four monks would end up giving you like a 70% chance to convert on each attempt. Monks don't benefit from any upgrades at the blacksmith, but you can massively improve their effectiveness by researching monastery techs. Sanctity is almost always worth grabbing to give your monks a bit more HP. And I almost always get fervor as well, which increases movement speed, but some players don't find it as valuable. In my opinion, the extra speed can make a difference, as you'll get in an extra wallow on a retreating unit, and fervor can help your monks keep pace with villagers or ballista elephants, which would otherwise be able to outrun you. Redemption allows conversion on buildings and siege units, however, even with redemption, it's difficult to convert buildings, rams, or trebuchets, as the monk must stand immediately beside those units. Atonement lets your monks convert other monks. Herbal medicine is more situational, as you won't always be garrisoning lots of units in your castle, but if you're playing something expensive like elephants, it certainly can pay off. I usually only get this as Aztecs though, to get the plus 5 HP. Heresy is a defensive tech that makes your units die instead of succumbing to conversion. Faith adds conversion resistance, but it's also super expensive at 750 food and 1000 gold. Block printing is a must grab tech. It increases both conversion range and your line of sight. So monks can be surprisingly effective scouts, especially on arena, and you'll get more conversion attempts in before the enemy units can kill you or escape. Illumination reduces the time your monk must rest after a conversion. Theocracy makes it so group conversions only deplete one monk's faith. Shift Q conversions could reduce the intensity of monk micro, but each sequential conversion would start its own timer, so manual targeting can still be better. Given the APM is limited on controller though, this might be a better trade-off than it would be on PC. Another tip for Shift Q? If you task a monk to convert, then you can left trigger with X to garrison them in a nearby building as soon as the conversion completes. This can be great for defending against knights while standing under your town center. There are a few civs with unique monk bonuses too. Aztec monks get plus 5 HP from each tech, First Crusade gives Sicilians additional resistance, and it can stack with Faith and the Teuton team bonus. Spanish monks and missionaries convert faster after researching Inquisition. 
Burmese see relics on the minimap and get cheaper monk texts. Bohemian villagers are affected by fervor and sanctity. Lithuanian knights and latis gain up to plus four attack from garrisoned relics. All right, let's dive into the controller techniques. So pressing right on the D-pad will select a monk or a sheep, but you typically won't have both at the same time. This means you can always quickly select a monk without needing to assign control groups or even know where your monks are. By default, this snaps the camera, which sucks. So open up the settings and turn that off. If you've gotten used to the D-pad snapping, this might be a bit of a learning curve, but now you can press D-pad to select and then click in the left stick to snap. Holding the D-pad will still select all. Now that you've got it set up, check this out. You can keep your cursor over the enemy while cycling through your monks to task them onto different conversions. Bonus points? This is super annoying for your enemy because they're going to hear the conversion warning every time you do this. Remember, switching targets doesn't reset the timer, so you can keep clicking them around as much as you want just to psych your opponent out. If you don't want to change your settings, the next best way is probably to use selection filters to drop monks from your group as you task the conversions. This is similar to what some PC players will do, but on console, you don't need to move the cursor between the battle and your UI. By holding B and tapping down on the D-pad, you can remove units from your selection. Just like the previous method, this lets you control separate monks without looking away from the enemy army. How this works is you start with your entire group of monks converted, then use the selection filter to remove one before tasking the group to another unit repeating until the group has been reduced to one monk and each is on its own target. You gotta be pretty quick with this though, otherwise the group can burn their faith on the first target. So it's best to try this with a small or medium sized group of monks as you only get like four to 10 seconds to target them all. This one is however, kind of bugged at the moment. Sometimes pressing B and down still selects the town center as if you didn't press B at all. Assigning your monks to control groups is probably the most common technique for PC players, so I felt like it was worth mentioning, but this one isn't that great on console in my opinion, as you don't really gain anything over using the D-pad shortcut, but do lose a considerable amount of time in setting up those groups. If you do want to go this route, a setting you might want to check out is switching your number of control groups from 8 to 12. To execute this one, you assign one monk to each group, then tap LB to cycle through the groups as you task each monk to convert enemy units. To queue into groups, you hold RT and LB, then you can use the D-pad to select a group and hit A to confirm. So this is by far the sickest one. If you've seen my scouts video, you know I was lukewarm on the site menu at release because it was selecting far off units, but that's actually been fixed now, so this works great. Instead of selecting any monks, you can just hit right trigger over an enemy unit and stick down to select send monk. This will select a nearby monk and order him to convert the targeted unit. This is really fast to do, and you can't misclick the ground this way, accidentally restarting your monk's second timer. The hitbox on the site menu is also pretty generous, so it's easier to do this compared to clicking enemy units directly. The downside though is if you're trying to avoid wasting your conversion on a low HP enemy, it can be difficult to do this as this method is less precise than the others. You can also use the site menu to pick up relics, but the monk is just going to stand there when he gets it, so it's still better to select one manually first, and then you can shift Q him to grab it and go back to the monastery. Oddly, even if you have monks with relics out on the field, you can't use the site menu to send them home, and you also can't heal your units with the site menu. The strongest units to make against monks are hussars and eagles, as they're both fast and resistant. Take note, however, that a Magyar hussar from the castle doesn't have the same monk bonus as a normal hussar from the stable. Castles themselves, however, are very strong monk stoppers, as they can't be converted and they fire enough arrows to just melt monks insanely fast. Similarly, doing a castle creep treb push is also strong, as the monks won't be able to get in close enough to convert the trebs. Ranged units can be okay if you have a lot of them. Armor upgrades have no effect on conversion resistance, so if you're facing monks, it makes sense to prioritize attack upgrades at the blacksmith. So are controller monks viable? Kind of? I tried going full wallalo in a couple ranked matches and lost them both. But that's not to say monks are trash and you shouldn't use them. They just take more practice than other units, and I'm pretty sure they can be quite powerful if you master them. I pray that you wallalo learned everything you ever wanted to know about playing monks on console from this video. Let me know how these techniques work out in your games, and if one of my tips helps you convert a Teuton Scout, be sure to like and subscribe. See you next week.